Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. This is Rusty78609. I'm here on Highway 32, which is a kind of a back road from, well, not really a back road. It's about the only road to get to San Marcos from Blanco, Texas. It's a windy little road through the hill country, and it's a pretty drive. Unfortunately, it's a cloudy sky, so the video won't be as bright as normal on a clear day. Having said that, what important news do I have to impart to you this morning? None, as in zero, nothing. So if you think there, if you want something important in every video you watch, this ain't one of them. However, we're going to take a little walk down memory lane, and we're going to talk about kites. The name of this video is "Go Fly a Kite." Can any of you remember? flying a kite. I can. I can remember making kites from sticks because I couldn't afford to buy them at the, at the store. But finally I was able to get some pre-made kites. But yeah, we used to make the kites, you know, the kind of the diamond shaped kites and then put a tail on them. You, know, you had to put a tail on them and uh, we'd make a tail out of, uh, you know, just old strips of cloth and, yeah, it, it, and get a, a ball of string that was, uh, gosh, I don't know, uh, sometimes I think I probably had nearly a mile of, of string. <laughs> yeah, but this is kite flying weather. I mean, it's windy here in Texas, you know, it's spring. Springtime is usually kite flying weather uh, around the world, I think. And, uh, but yeah, it's a lot of fun. And what we used to do, you know, you let the kite go up so far you could hardly see it. And, uh, and then you could actually, if you wanted to be really creative, you could take a little piece of paper, tear it, and then put it on the string of the kite. Of course, write a note, you know, something really cute. I don't remember what I wrote, something stupid, I'm sure. But you could gradually work that piece of paper up that string by just kind of pop in the string real real lightly and, the, and that little piece of paper would just move right on up the string to close to where the kite was and then you could make a really hard pop with the string you know pull it back and let it go and then and that would release that note and it would float who knows where we thought that was really neat and uh, yeah those were the really high-tech days I grew up in there was no internet uh, basically but well, we had a telephone but it wasn't anything like now uh, but no TV, radio, that was about it. You know, people used to sit around and watch the radio. I know I've mentioned that before in other videos. But, yeah, the kite flying thing was fun. We, back when I was a kid in the early 50s, um, yeah, you know, I was born in 1945. So, you know, I was around 6, 7, 8, 9 years old, 10, 1955. And, uh, yeah, but you had to be really creative, you know. We... We had, of course, you flew kites, we played marbles. Now, that was a big deal. You, know, you had to have just the right marble. You know, we had cat's eyes and all that stuff. And then you had, if you had, a, you know, if you found some uh, steelies, you know, which were the steel marbles out of bearings, uh, you know, those were, well, that was a big deal. You know, cat's eyes and uh, steelies. And, uh, yeah, and if you knocked one out of the circle, you got to keep it. You know, sometimes you're a pretty good marble player or shooter. Uh, you could end up with a whole sack full of marbles. Yeah, and they sold big marbles too. They sold some that were about big rounds a quarter, and then most of them were about big rounds a penny or a little less maybe. And uh, but yeah, that was a big deal. We were pretty creative. You, know, you drew a circle, and, you know, and all that stuff. I, I don't remember the stupid rules. And then we also spun tops. You know, you put a googer in one of them, which is basically a big chip or a dent in the other guy's top. And, uh, you know, we had guy. even I did it. I mean, you took the original point out of the top and put a nail in there and put it, sh made it real sharp and long, a long pointy nail. Oh, yeah, you could split another top with that thing. Yeah, but th this is just reminiscing about kids' games we came up with. And, uh, of course, I lived out in the country, you know, it was kind of a treat for me to go to town and play marbles and throw tops and, and, uh, and of course, fly kites. Another thing we did... Uh, uh, was uh, fly model airplanes. You know, they had the little, little. Uh, I don't know, they weren't gasoline powered motors. You bought the little can of uh, fuel. I'm not sure what it was, but uh, yeah, and you had the little bitty engines with a propeller, 
and uh, you can mount them on a, a balsa wood airplane that you either built pre, that you bought pre-built or built yourself or basically I, I actually bought some uh, we actually had a hobby shop in Kennedy Texas believe it or not we did we had a hobby shop unbelievable where you can buy all kinds of stuff and uh, so I bought a just a chunk of uh, balsa wood and, uh, and, and then a flat piece to make the wing and tail out of and I made me a, 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 an airplane. I did. I sure did. I carved it myself. I carved out part of the center to make it lighter and stuff. And I made the wing myself and the tail and all the stuff. And I made it so that the, the wing flaps would move. Oh, no, I did it all myself. I worked really hard. You can buy all those parts at the uh, uh, hobby shop. And I thought, well, hell, why would I want to buy a $5 kit when I can build one for a buck? So I did. Did it work? Well, let me say this, it wasn't exactly uh, supersonic, but with one of those small little engines that they had, uh, it would it would, it would fly, it, it would. <laughs> you had a little hand controller, you know, to move your flaps so you could get it to go up and down. But basically it just flew around in a circle. And mine was not what you would call a high altitude uh, aircraft. Uh, it would fly about 10 feet off the ground, straight and level, and that was it. But it would do it all the time. I mean, it would fly until it ran out of gas. And then it would uh, gently light down, so to speak. And then we had some that had the bigger engines. You know, there always had to be a few that the, the aircraft would go super fast. But when they hit the ground, uh, it was like Humpty Dumpty. You couldn't put it back together again. And, uh, yeah, we, we had one guy that had one. I mean, it was a super fast. It was like a single wing thing. And it had a big, well, what I considered a big engine on it, which was about a, I don't know, maybe a quarter of a horsepower at that. But yeah, it would zip around that circle in a heartbeat. Yeah. And, uh, but anyway, th those are just things I'm thinking about as I'm driving on this road headed to San Marcos, Texas. Uh, it's about 9 o'clock in the morning, not quite. But it's pretty, this is a pretty drive through the hill country. I think this is called the Devil's Backbone, this road because it kind of winds around and winds around to the hill country of Texas. But yeah, it's, it's pretty nice. Not much traffic. Uh, and I, what I'm always impressed with when you get on a two lane road like this is you know, it, 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 long, if the, the yellow stripe is in your lane, then of course you're not supposed to pass. But when it's not in your lane and there's a long straight uh, opening you know, for people to pass, uh, I don't know why they don't. You know, they, they'll run right up. They'll come right up behind you, get right on your bumper, like there's one now. Now here's a place to pass, okay? And I'm slowing down to let this person go by because it's perfect. Ah, what well, do you know? They're going to finally do it. This is the per third time I've tried. But anyway, thank you for getting off my bumper. So moving right along here in Central Texas, USA, on a nice day. And this is today, guys. Always move forward. Yesterday's gone. Can't do a thing about anything that happened yesterday. Uh, you can do a little bit about what's happening right now because you're in control of it. But what's going to happen in the next five seconds, I can't tell you. And I don't want to. I ain't going to guess. But anyway, I'm going to put down my supervisor in my Spark 2021 LS manual transmission. Averaging right now 46.9 miles per hour and per gallon at about... 65 miles an hour, which is not too shabby, actually. So, on and on we go. Today, we're, I'm going to the bank in San Marcos and meet with the buyer of the Ram truck. My son's going to be there because he's the one that did the sale. I don't know why I, everybody's got to be there, but uh, their rules, the bank. So, I'm going to go there and sign whatever paperwork I have to sign. Pick up a cashier's check. Give my son a big fat check for a part of the sale price, which I agreed to give him if he sold it himself, and he did. So here we're coming through some destruction, commonly known as construction. But first, you got to destroy it and then rebuild it. That's what my son does. He, he works with a company that builds bridges and roads in Texas for the Texas Department of Transportation. Oh man, they got hundreds of millions of dollars worth of uh, uh, construction jobs. They got like 80 jobs going right now. And he's the safety and environmental engineer. Yeah, he does good. He does, he's doing good. Good kid. Good, good man now. I mean, he's 40. Let me see. He's, uh, he'll be 
48 this year, I think. And my other son being 38. Both good men. Both very good men. Proud of them. I would let them back me up on anything. Sometimes they can be a little hard to deal with. I can't understand why or where they get that. I don't know where they get that independent thinking stuff. But on and on we go, guys. What about RVing? Got a trip coming up soon. Well, about two weeks. Uh, and then we'll do one a month. Or I will. We will. Two, one a month for about uh, anywhere from three to four days to a week. Uh, until it starts to warm up. And then we will move. Well, you know, if uh, New Mexico gets back into the real world then uh, I will go to New Mexico. If not, I will check out some other spots. Where? I'm not sure yet. But I got the whole world out there, guys, and I can go anywhere I want to go. Why do I like New Mexico? Well, you know, I've been there so many times, a lot of those areas around there are predictable, and I kind of like that, you know? I'm, you know, 75, and I like, you know, I like knowing where the grocery store is, where I can get gas, you know? where I can camp and so forth. And uh, so, yeah, but we'll see how it goes. I know. No, que sera, sera, whatever will be, will be. Who sang that? June Allison? I don't know. Maybe. Maybe one of the ones. Que sera, sera, whatever will be, will be. The future's not ours to see. Que sera, sera. That's it, babe. Remember that Spanish phrase, it'll get you through life. But anyway, ladies and gentlemen, on Highway 32, smoking along at about 62 miles an hour in a 2021 Chevy Spark LS manual transmission with nothing, no cruise control, no nothing, no power windows, no, no sunroof, no, no solar everything. No, we're cooking, guys. But anyway... Anyway, 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 thumbs up, Carpe Diem, Adios, bye, 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 anything you want, anytime. But if you think about it, use the Amazon link in the description of all of my videos except this one. Why? Because I don't know how to get it in there and all I've got is my cell phone. But if you need, if you want to use the Amazon link, go to one of my other videos and there's a link there. Just click on it, go to Amazon, buy whatever you want. Doesn't cost you one penny. Amazon takes care of me. And what else? Drink plenty of water, stretch, walk. Take deep breaths. Stand guard at the door of your mind. My, my, my. We live in a world of negative crap and insanity, man. And the news, I don't watch it, but I hear people talking about it. And if what they're saying is what's on the news, I am embarrassed almost. But yeah, just read the news. You know, and you're going to get the same negative crap. You just won't, if the dose, dose won't be so distasteful. But anyway, ladies and gentlemen, enjoy your day. It's a Wednesday hump day. And so, yeah, I, was, I could say something, but I'm not going to do it. Anyway, it's hump day. Just remember that. Adios, guys. Bye-bye.